Salutations, BookTube, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. Welcome to the Sitter Go Writer channel. My name is Blessing, and today I'll be doing the January book tag created by Jan from Jang Agonton. I don't really have much of a preamble or like an intro for this book tag, to be honest. So I have the questions in my handy data bullet journal right here. So honestly, let's just get into it. All right. I will be tagging Jan in the description and also link to her channel along with her original video. So yep, all that stuff will be linked down below. Alrighty now, question number one. What was the last and first, if you remember, book you read last year? Well, the last book I read last year was A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. This is an adult historical fantasy romance. It's a first in a trilogy, actually. So there's Marvelous Light, there's this its sequel, A Restless Truth, that's already came out last year. And I think there'll be the third and final book coming out this year. I don't know when. But this story pretty much just follows uh, Robin, Blythe, and Edwin Kersey. And one of the, I think Edwin is like a magician. Yeah, he's like does magic stuff. Robin is not. Someone dies and they got to figure out who, who killed the, the, the person that died. That's not really the great way to describe this book. But like, that's just the best way I can think of describing it. Look, look, I read this like in middle of December. I, I don't know what else you want from me. I gave this book three and a half stars. It's really good. I mean, I won't say it's like really, really good because it was really good. I would have said four stars, but it is good. I recommend it to people. It's just that I'm not trying to sound prudish, but that's just what it is for me. I thought, I truly think that the sex scenes were a little bit too, they're just too graphic for me. A little bit just too explicit and way long. They're way too long. And uh, there were too many of them. Sorry, I have problems with the sex scenes. That's just me. That's my personal opinion, so don't attack me for it, but, like, I'm sorry. There's, like, maybe four or five, like, three to five. There's, like, three, four or five sex scenes in here. So, uh, I did not know that the sexual content will be graphic. So, I want to say it's kind of my fault on that part, but still. Otherwise, this still is a really solid read. I am planning to read the sequel this year in 2023. I don't know if I'm going to talk about it, though, on this channel. But, well, you know, we'll see. Wait and see. Wait and see. As far as my first read of the year... I think my first read of 2022 was Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. At the time, I rated it 4.75 stars, which honestly, now I'm thinking retrospectively, that's way too high. But it follows uh, a girl named Frances Janvier, and she meets someone who's the host of her favorite podcast, and they become friends. Yeah, I don't know what else, what how else to describe the book, but that... And I think something about their friendship goes awry and then they got to fight for their friendship, something like that. It's a little good story, but I just don't think it's, I don't think if I were to read it now, it'd be as close to being a five star read. Probably more like a four, 4.25, but eh, at the time I read it, it was 4.75. So that's the rating for it. All right. Question number two. What is your first read this year? Well, so far, even though right now I think we're mid January. Yep. I've already read like three books so far this year. And the first book I read was actually, hmm, it's actually a carryover from last year. And that was Gideon the Ninth by, Tam by Tamsin Muir. So Gideon the Ninth is the first book in a series, the Locked Tomb series. At first, actually, it was supposed to be a trilogy, but I guess Muir wanted to add another book to the series. Like, according to, like, the fur my paperback edition, it only shows three books that's supposed to be part of, like, the trilogy. But I guess Nona, the ninth, was just a impromptu book that's in between Harrow and the fourth and upcoming novel, Electo the Ninth, that is now a series instead of a trilogy? Whatever. Um, I don't even know, necessarily know how to describe this book. I mean, the only thing I knew about this book going in, that it was lesbian necromancers in space. That's, that's all I really knew. And I'm just like... Cool, but it's a little bit more than that. Sure, we have we have necromancy. We ha we're in space. There are nine different houses, I guess, that have their own planets, and like the leaders of each of the houses, plus like their I don't know bodyguard, Calier people come with them to this haunted, kind of abandoned planet, and they're inside of a palace, and they 
have to figure out puzzle pieces in order to achieve some sort of higher power kind of thing. I mean, that's the actual plot of the story. So if that sounds interesting, I rec- recommend it to you. Although I will have to say, let's see, what did I rate this book? This is like a 4.25, four and a half star. So I did really enjoy it. It's just that the writing is pretty dense. Even for science fiction, even for and this is sci-fi fantasy, the writing is pretty dense and kind of, con- and it, actually not even kind of, it's dense and convoluted in its own way, in a way that could be annoying for you if you're not the kind of person that vibes with convoluted writing and dense writing. If you're not okay with that, then I will suggest to stay away from the series because I'm like, I don't think, I, I don't know. I've only read the first book. I do own Harrow and Nona. So I will keep reading those books to see if the writing style is still the same. But like this one was definitely a confusing read. But I still enjoyed it for what it was. Once I got used to like the writing style, it became a lot more easier to like absorb and understand what was going on and stuff. So yep, I recommend it if you're interested. But if you're not, or you're not interested in convoluted dense writing, then I recommend you not reading this. So yep, although I did read it via audio. So the audiobook was helpful. Actually, I really like the narrator. So if, you could, if you're into audiobooks, I, maybe I can recommend you the, the audiobook for it. Maybe. If you're not in, if you, uh, just, just to get through you, just to help with the writing style. My personal recommendation there. All right. Question three. Share three of your reading goals this year. Hmm. I have four I would like to share. And I'm just going to quickly share them. Because I kind of already talked about this in my previous video. We're talking about my 2022 reflections and 2023 goals. So one of my goals is to read 75 books. That's pretty much my overarching reading goal number for the year. Uh, I also want to read outside my comfort zone. So like outside like the fantasy, even historical, around there, you know. Try to explore to other kind of genres. Maybe some nonfiction, short story essay collections. Maybe some classics. You know, maybe read more graphic novels. I haven't read a lot of graphic novels last year, so. Also, want to prioritize my physical TBR. So any book that's on my shelf currently, unless I bought more books because it's part of like a series or whatever, or I just buy books because whatever. It is what it is. The point is I'm trying to prioritize my physical TBR. That's the goal anyways. That's the goal. And also, utilize my public library more. Like, I already use my public library for like, audiobooks. I use Libby to borrow audiobooks, which do come in clutch when I really need an audiobook. But as far as like a physical book, I don't really borrow a lot of physical books. I haven't done that since like I was like in school and stuff. But I'm just like, you know what? Let's get back into borrowing books, physical copies. You know, let's let's do that. Looking forward for that one. So far, I think I'm doing pretty well with these goals so far. All right. Question four. Share three of your most anticipated titles. Hmm, I have five because I am really, really, really looking forward to these books. Like these are the kind of books that I expect myself to read that year. Not books I'm going to buy and have my shelf and then I don't touch until the next year. No, no, no. I'm going to read these books in 2023 when they come out. Now, not when I buy them. I mean, I don't know about that, but when they're out and about, I will read them. Number one is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This one is her literary debut. It's a satirical literary thriller following uh, a white woman that steals the manuscript of her recently deceased Asian friend. And the manuscript actually was talking about, I don't remember what the manuscript was about, but this white woman literally just stole her uh, friend's manuscript and published it as her own with a different pseudonym that's more Asian sounding. And I'm just like, hmm, interesting. And I have seen some people that have already read um, some arcs already talking about how it's pretty much a, com- a combination of like Letitia from Babel and his experience from the Poppy Word trilogy. Put them, combine them together into one person. And I'm just like, oh, this person is going to be a, such an insufferable main character. Insufferable. But I am here for it because it is, it, it is satirical. So I'm going to be laughing at this person. I'm laughing at them. Especially if this is a, a, com- a combination of Letty and the Hesperians. Like, you know? And also, Kwong also says that uh, she wanted this book to be, like, you know, devoured within, like, one sitting. And I'm like, hmm. I've never really read a book. I never actually read something that's in one sitting. Even if like, this is a manga, I don't read something just in one sitting. So I'm going to be intrigued. I'm like, hmm. 
I hope I will be able to read this in one sitting. I will love that for me. Just just for me, you know. I'll have to wait and see in this one. But that's number one. Number two, volume nine of Spy Family. So yeah, I've already been caught up. I have not watched the anime. I've only read the manga. So I've already read all eight volumes last year. Now I'm going to wait for volume nine. And while I wait, I might as well just reread the eight volumes. Why not, right? Sure, I still remember what happened in volume eight. But like... Why re- reread Volume 8 when I can just reread the entire series? And if you don't know what Spy Family is, it's pretty much just a manga series about a guy named Twilight who has to build a fake family in order to save the world. The wife is an assassin, the daughter is a telepath, and they don't know who each other are anyway. And the only one who knows is Anya, who's the telepathic child. So she's my favorite. So number three I'm looking for as well is Teen Titans Robin, which is the fourth book in the Teen Titans graphic novel series by uh, Cami Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo. This one would be following along two Robins, I think. I think more on Damian Wayne Robin more so than Dick Ray- than Dick Grayson Robin. I think they're the only two Robins in that graphic novel. I know there's multiple Robins, but like as far as the main one, those two are going to be like the main ones for sure, for sure in that graphic novel. And if you don't, you've never actually heard of this graphic novel series. It's pretty much just a series of just a small, I don't necessarily know how many graphic novels are going to be in here, but like it just follows the Teen Titans in its own, it's still in the world of like superheroes and DC and all that stuff, but like it's still like just following the different Teen Titans. The first book was Raven, the second book was Beast Boy, and then the third book was when Beast Boy and Raven meet. And now in the fourth one, we're going to be following two Robins. So, cool. I already know that Starfire and Cyborg are going to be in the mix eventually. I don't know when. I don't know how the series is going to end, but I'm here for the ride. I'm here for reading the, the next one. The re- Liz, uh, reading with the Robins. And this next book I'm going to talk about is going to come out Valentine's Day. It's called The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshashni Chakshi. And this will be her adult debut. This is like an adult gothic romance novel following a marriage between like a husband and wife. I think it's like an arranged marriage or something. And wifey says to hubby, hey, I'm cool with this marriage as long as you do not ask me about my past. But then they somehow go to her childhood home and hubby finds secrets about wifey. And I think it's a whole mess. I mean, it's gothic. It's a gothic romance. I mean, I, I don't I don't really know what else to talk about the book. All, all I know is, is that I want to give this author another chance because I haven't I DNF'd uh, the Gilded Wolves. Sorry, y'all. Not really a big fan of the Gilded Wolves like that, but I want to try again with this author. I have not read her middle grade series at all, but I do want to read the her adult debut because, you know, why not, right? And then another book that I am looking forward to that is YA that I am really looking forward to is a book called Blood Depths by Terry J. Benton, Benton Walker. That one comes out April 4th. Now, this one follows two siblings, and I think it takes place in New Orleans, and it has blood magic, and uh, some about family, ancestry. I I don't know, y'all. I just know about family, siblings, and blood magic. What else do I need to know? YA fantasy. And also, I need to be, I'm trying to see if I can read more YA fantasy, because I have not, I've not read a lot, and the ones I have read, or at least try to read, some I have not really, for some I have not enjoyed, so... I'm trying to do better with reading more YA fantasy again. So, I'm looking forward to this one. So, yeah, that was five titles instead of three. But I don't care because I am into. I have a lot of anticipated releases. I need to at least talk about a few of them. All right. Question five. Which goals did you reach or not reach last year? Well, I've actually reached a lot of my goals. Like, I read 50 books. I borrowed audio books. I unhauled books I didn't care about and made room on my shelf for the books I do care about. So all in all, I did achieve all the goals I had. I didn't have a lot, but I achieved all of them. Although I guess some other goals I didn't... Although there were a couple goals, I guess, as time went on in the year that I was like, you know, I really should uh, do better with this, but then I didn't really do that well with it. Well, one is for sure is to write is writing like, you know, longer reviews. I don't really do that. I don't do it on Goodreads as much or Storygraph. So and also keep in track of how much books I buy. All right. Because sometimes you don't want to look at how much you really spend on books. But, you know, I'm going to do better this year. I'm going to do better this year. All right. Question number six. 
Are there new releases this year you've heard of that you have no desire to read? Oh, well, there are several. But at the far, as far as the notable ones, I'm just going to say the disclaimer, though. Um, I'm not interested or looking forward to any Emily Henry, Cassandra Clare, Colleen Hoover, C.J. Moss, uh, Ali Hazelwood. If any of those authors have a new book coming out, I don't even care. Don't don't tell me. Don't tell me. Brandon Sanderson, I don't know if he's going to have a book this year. I don't care. Don't don't tell me anything. Riley Sager, I don't care. Don't tell me anything. Just anything about these authors, don't don't tell me anything. I I don't care. Just as a general thing. But the ones in particular I'm really am not looking forward to, although I pop, might or might not actually read. Who knows? But one thing for sure is that is Hellbent. As I'm recording, Hellbent has been out uh, for two days. And I've seen lots and lots of posts regarding um its release which i'm like look that, i'm excited for i'm happy that y'all are happy for hellbent i mean y'all have been waiting for this book for a few years now like ninth house came out 2019 and now hellbent is out that's like been over three years ago now like that's a long time to wait for a sequel especially since i don't even think the the alex stern series is even a duology i think there might even be a third book but I don't know if this is said on the record or not from Lee Bardugo, but I think the Alex Stern series will be a trilogy. So there probably will be a third book. If not, it probably... Look, if I'm wrong, and then I'm wrong. But I, I heard it'll be a trilogy. So there will be a third book, I think. So I don't know when that third book is coming out. Probably another three to four years. So honestly, I'm not really looking forward to Hellbent because I didn't even finish Ninth House, even though I do kind of plan to read it for uh, for a video. So I might read Hellbent, but not because I've read Ninth House, but because I accidentally picked Hellbent as my January pick for Book of the Month. So great. Great for me. Um, and there's also this other book called Modern Divination, uh, Divination, and I don't know how to pronounce the author's name, so I'm just going to leave the book cover there. Um... I don't remember when this book is supposed to come out. The only thing I really I don't I don't know I don't think I don't think this book has gotten a lot of hype, at least not as much as Hellbent, but I have seen it around a little bit and uh I'm not really entirely interested. I'm intrigued, but I'm not entirely anticipating it. And I have very little desire to read it. If I read it, it'll probably be for like an experiment video or something or a book channel. It's not something I really was looking that much forward into it, but like, eh, probably will read it. Not gonna have too many expectations about it. Eh. As far as what's about, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it gives Dark Edema. It's definitely been compared to Ninth House, but like Ninth House, if it were a romance, so that's int- so if that's interesting to you. Then read Modern Divinations, but I don't think I will. And then there's a sequel to The Final Strife, which is called The Battle Drum by Sarah um, El Arifi. And I'm not really anticipating this one because I DNF to The Final Strife. So just want to put that on the record. There's probably some other books, too, that I'm not really anticipating. But I can't really remember what all those other books were. It's just those three in particular. I'm just like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to read these ones. So, yep. That's question number six. All right. Question number seven. What are some reading habits you want to change this year, if any? Well, I want to at least try to read every day. At first, I was thinking, like, you know, read at least 100 pages of a book physically or uh, listen to at least two hours on audiobook. But some days, I'm just not in the mood to read that many pages or that many hours of an audiobook or book or whatever, you know. I'm like, look, the point is just read every day. That's the goal. Read every day. And that's, that's just what I'm going to do. That's just one thing I want to try for sure. And I also want to keep track of, like, book quotes, you know? Like, if I'm really enjoying a the book, then why not? Why don't I have, like, a quote from the book that I can say, like, yeah, this is what I, uh, one quote that I really, really liked, you know? So I'm trying to do that uh, this year. I don't know if I'm going to keep up with it, but, you know, even if it's a book I didn't really like, at least I have a quote for a reason why I didn't like it, right? All right, question Number eight. Are there any adaptations you're excited about? Um, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I haven't really been very excited with film or book to film adaptations or even book to television show adaptations in the last few years, to be completely honest with you. Unless it's like anime, which is 
practically manga adaptations. But even then, I'm just like, I'm not really looking that much forward to it. Like, I'm not looking forward to Hearthstopper Season 2 or Shadow and Bone Season 2. I'm not interested in either. So, just to let y'all know, sorry. Although, I am curious about Kindred. That's on Hulu, which is adapted. It's an adaptation of Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Although, I am, I want to read the book first before I watch the show. But I don't know. I'm not necessarily totally excited about it, but I'm I'm interested, sort of. Just more like curious, if anything. But there is a film though. Um, How do you live? The studio. It's a Studio Ghibli film that's coming out this summer um, in Japan. Written and directed by the Hayao Miyazaki. Yes, the very Hayao Miyazaki that said a few years ago, several years ago now, actually that. He's retired. He ain't gonna make no more films. Well, guess what? He's making another one. I don't know if this is his final, final one. I don't know if this is like a for real, for real final one. I don't know. At this point, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can really listen to that right anymore. But he has another film coming out. It's coming out July. Uh, at least in Japan. I don't know if it's the same for a U.S. release. So, I don't know. But it's pretty much... I don't know if it's necessarily an adaptation or it's based on or inspired by the same Japanese classic of the same of the same title, which Hayao Miyazaki has actually read as a child. So I don't know uh, what's it about. Honestly, I don't really know what the film itself is about. I don't even know what the the classic, the Japanese classic, um, How Do You Live, is even about either. All I know is it's that. Hi Miyazaki came out of retirement to make this film. So, I'm going to watch it. I don't know if I'll be able to watch it this year or next year. Whenever I'll be able to watch it, I'm going to watch it. Question number nine. Favorite bookish memory of last year? Hmm. I have a lot of favorite bookish memories, to be honest. There's, there's a lot. But I think the best one will be really interacting with the book community as a whole whether that's on booktube with by following so many book uh booktubers and commenting and subscribing to their videos or going on bookstagram following commenting liking posts and sharing them on my own stories making my own posts i think that's just the best way to talk about a bookish memory honestly it's just interacting more with the bookish community and and, and both on instagram and youtube so yep i think that'll be it I had a lot more, but honestly, I need to just sum this all up. <sighs> all right. Now, the final question. Question number 10. Carry over from last year that you still plan on finishing. Um, I'm not just going to say that I've already, I've only had three carryovers. All right. From last year. They were Getting the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern and Siren Queen by Nevo. Out of three three books here, I've only read these two. This one, unfortunately, is a DNF. I when I first wrote my uh, answers for these questions, I initially did plan on finishing this carryover, but as time went on, I had less. I I started to lose desire to even pick this book up. Um. So yeah. Uh, if you want to know what this book is about, it's uh, this book takes place pre Code Hollywood, so like the early 1900s, and it follows an a, a Chinese American girl who wants to pretty much be a star. On the Hollywood stage. I mean stage. The Hollywood screens, you know. And pretty much just follows her story regarding that. And honestly, I'm not really particularly interested in that. So, I, yeah, I'm kind of just lost interest in this one. Unfortunately. The writing is still very good, though. It's like really good writing stuff. It's just the story itself. It's just I'm no longer interested in reading. So, yep, that kind of sucks. So, honestly, to really answer this question, I don't really have any carryovers I plan on finishing that I haven't already finished for this year. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. But, anyways, that is all ten questions. So, thank you, Jan, from Jan Agaton, for making this book tag. I mean, this is a, what a great way to, like, uh, create a book tag regarding her name. I mean, Jan, January... 
you know? Now, as far as who to tag, I don't really... I don't really know necessarily on anyone who would really particularly would really actively really want to do it that haven't already done it themselves. But if you are interested, I'm just saying I'm just going to tag y'all. I'm, I'm just tagging y'all. But anyways, thank you again for coming on to this channel. I hope y'all will have a really great new year. Please look down in my description because I have all the links and stuff, not only from Jan's channel, but also, you know, uh, HarperCollins Union is still on strike. As I'm recording their day, I don't know. They've been over, four, it's been over two months now. Over two months since they strike. They've been striking since November 10th of last year. Harper Collins, what are y'all doing? So yes, I will link their link tree. I also link down their bookshop to, um, link as well. So if you want to like, you know, pre-order Yellowface, I highly recommend, I highly honestly suggest you uh, pre-ordering from their bookshop link so that they can have a, a percentage of those of that proceeds to their strike fund. And also, if you want to just support them through their strike fund, it's also in their link tree. And Solidarity Letter is also in their link tree. I'll also link down my link tree and some other things down below. Just look down there, all right? And also, I had to have this blanket because it is cold. It's a little bit chilly out here in the Midwest. But anyways, again, thank you again for coming on to this channel. If you like this video, please like it. Uh, also, subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And I hope to see you all... Later this month, then in the next video. Bye.